What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Cal and today I've got something a little bit different for you. Rather than my standard house tour or how to finish type videos, I thought it might be cool to do some tutorials on how to create set pieces for your home in the Elder Scrolls Online. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to create an aquarium for your house in Tamriel. All right, let's get started. Now, unlike some other MMOs, The Elder Scrolls Online doesn't have any standard prefab aquariums or fish tanks. I've come across several players who have built some from scratch, and if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I've made a couple for my homes. Right here in front of me, you'll see I've got a selection of materials that I like to use in my fish tank. All right, now before we get started on putting in all of the decoration, you're gonna need to build an enclosure for your fish tank. I really like to start with these elsewhere stall counters. Uh, if you flip them vertical, they actually make really good bookends for the aquarium. And because they're a little bit thicker than say a uh, plank of wood or even something like this painting, uh, you can use them on the ends to sort of tuck in your decorations and hide the rough edges. Uh, then for the back of the fish tank or aquarium, I do like to use these, uh, it's the bolted style of paintings. If I pick this up and uh, just rotate it around here, you'll see on the back, it's got a nice wood texture. And then for the base, I actually like to use scavenged plates. The plain one is usually good enough for a small fish tank. And again, we would just flip this up like this uh, and there you go, you'd have the front of the fish tank. So let me go ahead and create this enclosure real quick. Now, if I wanted to go a little bit smaller, I could get by with just the one scavenged plate Alternatively, I can always just pull out another one, do a little bit of an overlap here, and it should look all right once I get them all lined up. I've got the enclosure all together now. So I've got two scavenged plates down here on the bottom. I've got two up here at the top. I've got this painting of autumn bolted turned around, uh, and I actually swapped the sides of the two elsewhere stall counters. I think this is going to make the aquarium look a little bit bigger and give me more space for decoration. Uh, I think it also gives this nice clean edge on the outside, makes the whole thing square up nice. Okay, so once you've got your enclosure, which could be made from these same materials, or you could use any planks or walls or structural blocks that you find that work out for you. But once you've got your enclosure, you're probably gonna want two, three, or maybe even more of these blue flame braziers. So there are other blue lights in the game, but these ones you can see give off that nice little sort of like smoke effect, which will in this case appear to be uh, the bubbles or the aeration in the, the aquarium. So I've got three here for this fish tank. I think that's about right for the size. And you're gonna wanna just spread them out across the interior of the aquarium. You don't really wanna see the flames. You just want the bubbles and that little distortion effect. So I'm actually gonna drop these down a little bit. So now you can kinda see that effect that I was talking about. Now, once you've got your aquarium and you've got your lighting done, it's time to fill up the tank. And these are some of my favorites. I believe these are all from the Luxury Merchant. So if it's not available on the Luxury Merchant sometime soon, just check Guild Traders and you should be able to pick them up. This reed mace is relatively new. Uh, this flowering thorn succulent looks good. I used it in, I believe, my Captain Margot design along with this coral formation. This Vardenfell coral plant, uh, I believe I used in the Alpine Gallery along with the Merkmeyer Snake Vine. And I like these two just because of the animation. I'm gonna go ahead and throw all five of these in there since we've got a little bit of space to work with. But the most important thing is making sure they don't sort of poke out past where the, the glass would be. Throw this one on this side. And again, just rotate it in there until it doesn't look, the clipping doesn't look too bad. We can hide some of this on the back wall with vines as well, which I will do once I've got all of my plants in place. I actually forgot about the coat of flowers here. These also off the luxury vendor are great because they emit a little bit of that sort of green turquoise light. And I think it kind of helps the effect as well. So now that we've got the plants in there, the next thing to do is sort of cover up our mess at the bottom. And I like using these kelp piles to do that. These are pretty readily available. I don't bother fishing for them, but I believe they do come from fishing. Uh, I just could find them on guilt traders. And basically we just wanna put this just high enough to cover up the mess at the bottom of the tank. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Again, not many players who visit your house are gonna step up right this close to the tank. Um, I've previously used uh, the stone pebbles and stuff to sort of cover up the bottom, but you end up using a ton of stones and it takes up a lot of furnishing slots in your house to get a good look. It's not to say you can't use them still or throw a couple in there, but I think the kelp does a better job of covering up the mess without using too many slots. 
Now, another thing you could consider doing, rather than all of the plants, and I may actually swap a couple of these out, is using some other pieces that look interesting. So I like to throw some treasure in there. Uh, I think the Sacred Chalice of Isgrimor looks great. Uh, I also like the Decorative Thieves Trove. You can throw some coins in there. Uh, the skooma bubbler can also add a little bit more of sort of the, the bubble effect as well. I had an idea to use this music box. I don't want to turn it on right now though. Uh, I was going back and forth on whether it should be turned on or not, but I feel like it's a pretty cool piece to put in here. So next up is adding some life to the fish tank beyond all of the coral and plants. And these starfish do uh, a great job of sort of making it look like you've got glass actually holding everything in. If you just flip them vertical like that and place them at just the right spot, I've got my starfish up on the glass to sort of give the impression that there is actually glass there and it's not just a big imitation aquarium. Okay, so next up is to add some non-combat pets. Now, if you have the netch, I think the netch is great. Unfortunately, there's no sort of fish pet but these swamp jellies also make pretty good aquarium pets. Uh, you can also always use this mud crab if you have one of the mud crab pets and kind of tuck it along the bottom somewhere. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna be a good fit in this one just because I've got so much stuff in this tank, but if you had a little bit bigger tank, I could definitely see this being a good fit. I guess I could also maybe put it on the wall in the back. That'd be pretty cool. I'm gonna try that. Now, normally this would be just about it for me. I would maybe tweak things a little bit more just to make sure everything's in just the right spot. But I recently unlocked these small everlasting waterfalls and let me flip it back up normal so you can see it properly. Uh, these are an achievement item from Somerset. So if you do 30 daily quests for one of the Justicars there, uh, you can buy these from the Home Goods achievement vendor in Somerset. And I have a feeling that once flipped upside down, these are actually going to help reinforce the look even more. There we go. All right, I think that is a real win, although that is an expensive piece to add to these fish tanks at 75,000 gold a piece. As the final step, uh, I'll go ahead and throw on some ivy. I think this will help complete the look, and it also can be used to sort of cover up any mess along the back wall. So I'm just gonna throw these here, and this is, again is why these counter stalls are so great for this. You can see, if I hadn't have them there, those ivy that that vine would be sticking out the side let me hide the interface and there's the aquarium all done so kind of a quick job but i think we're looking pretty good let me try turning on this music box and i think that's that's pretty cool it kind of looks like maybe the bubbler is pushing it back and forth i've seen that in real aquariums in real life so there you go. Uh, you gotta get your enclosure, obviously. You gotta get those blue flame braziers to get the lighting right and get some of the water effect. Those small everlasting waterfalls also help out a bunch. Then just grab a netch or one of the swamp jellies, maybe a crab, some of these starfish and some random coral plants, and you've got yourself an aquarium in the Elder Scrolls Online. All right, so that's the basic design, but I wanna show you guys a slightly bigger version that I've been working on over at my Hall of the Lunar Champion. So let's head over there and take a look. This is gonna be the next uh, large or notable home that I finish furnishing. And I have collected all three of the tablets, so I do have all three of the extra areas unlocked, although I don't intend to use this one back here, which I believe is Moongrave Fane. I will be using Halls of the Colossus, and I will be using the Lion's Cradle. But what I want to do is cover up this little shrine with an aquarium, a mega aquarium. I think this one's gonna be about three times as large as the one I just showed you guys how to make on camera. So you can see I've got a bunch of the same stuff laid out over here. I've got a few extra plants since we're going a little bit bigger. I've got extra lighting involved here. So uh, with that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into a time place. Those are the finishing touches on my oversized aquarium here at the Hall of the Lunar Champion. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a home that I am hoping to finish decorating soon and do a full house tour on. 
I'm really happy with how this aquarium turned out. All of the animated items just really bring this look together, and I think it's probably the most convincing aquarium I've done to date. Uh, it's also significantly larger than most of the ones I've done. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Like I mentioned at the top of the episode, I do want to do more of these, and I've got ideas for a couple. But once again, just let me know if you want to see my take on something in the Elder Scrolls Online, whether it's uh, a stable or maybe a storage area. Who knows? Just let me know. And uh, maybe it's something I'll do in the next episode. And if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for the next one. Once again, I am Cal. Thank you for checking out the video today. I will see you guys again real soon. Bye for now. Thank you.